Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <coughs> my name is Ken Ma and here I'm posting free Linux tutorials, ad hoc tutorials in an ad hoc playlist. Uh, I've already done create a USB stick with Ventoy and this one is using VBox to install Ubuntu. There are four playlists at the moment, introduction as well as ad hoc, scripting and admin. Uh, they have automatically generated captions or subtitles if you want them and in the introduction you'll find the first part of my Linux command line for beginners and Windows users course. This video plus PDF notes that you can download and use. But today we're looking at VirtualBox. There's no PDF notes with this one. Most of them, in fact all of these the command line have got PDF files. Some of these, the USB for Ventoy had a PDF file, but this VBox one doesn't have. I'm just making it up as I go along. So to start, we'll open VirtualBox. Um, now, if you don't know how to install VirtualBox, what I suggest you do is go to The introduction here, the first of the sections of the Linux command line for beginners and that shows you how to download and install VirtualBox and create a simple VirtualBox machine or virtual machine. So I'm assuming you've got VirtualBox installed, I've got it installed here, I've got um, CentOS 8 running, it's saved which means if I open it, it comes back as I left it. And I left it like that. Give it a minute or a few seconds as it says. There we go. Um, if I save that, then next time I want it, it'll open in the same way. What I've done to save opening VirtualBox like this is I've pinned a shortcut to the desktop which you can do if you open it there. Right click, create shortcut desktop. There's my shortcut down there. So rather than opening VirtualBox I can just double click on that to open it. Now if we're going to install in fun Ubuntu the first thing we need is a new virtual machine. You can give it any name you like. You notice here it says Microsoft Windows. If I call this Ubuntu, I think Ubuntu 20 is the latest, then it switches to Linux and it goes to 64 bit. You can change those. So you can install Solaris or MacOS. And you can choose to use 32 bit or 64 bit Ubuntu. I'm 64 bit here. There you go, next. Assign the memory. I usually give it 50% of what I've got available. I've got 6 gig on here, so I'm going to give it half of that. Now, if you were installing a machine that already existed, you would choose use an existing virtual hard drive. But we're creating a new one, so you want create a virtual hard disk now. It's going to be a virtual hard disk image. And if you dynamically allocate it, it only uses space as it needs it. Now they've suggested 10 gig for Ubuntu, which is fine. Uh, I'm going to make it optionally bigger because I might find a use for it later. I'm going to make it 50. You can choose. I mean, it doesn't need to be very big. And then create. Now, we're going to install Ubuntu from uh, a USB drive. And here, sorry, here, I've got a Ventoy drive containing my setup files, which I use when I set things up. And ISOs, multiple ISOs, which can be used to install different versions of Linux, 
that one installs arch that installs mint which is what i'm using at the moment that installs ubuntu you can install windows 10 that's gparted which i'll do a um, an ad hoc video on later um, and that's super grub which you can use to rescue your system now if you haven't got this have a look at the first ad hoc playlist there creating a usb drive with ventoy that'll show you how to do it and then come back here So what I need to do is load Ubuntu into my machine. And the way you do that, you go to storage, click on empty, find the Ubuntu drive, choose a disk file. This is all explained in the introduction of the, um, the CLI course. Well, there's three of them there that I've used before, but we're going to choose Ubuntu. That's not looking in the right place. Uh, right. I'm going to find Ventoy now. That will be loaded somewhere. Probably in something like Media. Yeah. Ventoy. There we go. Ubuntu. What it came up the first time was the ISO images in my home directory and they don't have Ubuntu because I downloaded it on a different machine. Now to find the USB stick what you do is you go to the computer a good guess is that it's under media KDM Ventoy. If you don't want to guess open the terminal Oops, that's not opening a terminal, is it? Open the terminal and do a DF. There it is. Media KDM Ventoy. So it's loaded there. So, pick a Ubuntu. So I must stop saying so. Open. That's loaded. Okay. Check it's loaded. There it's there. Click start and it comes up and says do you want to use the hard drive? No we don't, we want the ISO. Now these little things at the top here are all to do with the mouse, you can get rid of them. It'll take a minute to load, I'll just pause it. If you don't want to check the disk, just type control and C. That's been skipped. Well, here we are. So you can try Ubuntu. Don't click there though, click here. I think. Or as we're going to do, install Ubuntu in English. Well, that's the welcome. So click there. It's English US. So I want UK. Continue. I want a normal installation. Optionally downloading updates while it's installing. That takes time afterwards. You can install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware at the same time. I'll do this in real time, then you can see how long it takes. Well, apart from the copy. I'll tell you how long that takes. Now, if 
you're doing this in VirtualBox, normally what you do is erase the disk and install Ubuntu. If you're doing it on a laptop with nothing on it, or a PC, again, you might want to erase a disk and install Ubuntu. But if you want to install it beside Windows, which is already there, Windows will have to be there first if you're going to dual boot Ubuntu and Windows, Linux and Windows, or you want it beside um, another version of Linux, then you need to do something else. There's my disk, SDA. It's got nothing on it. So what we're going to do is create first a new partition table. So this is the same as if you were doing it on your laptop or PC, although we're doing it within VirtualBox. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, I don't know though. No, that's right. That's got the new partition table. Now go to the free space. Remember, I gave you 50 gig. So here I can choose a partition. Well, Ubuntu it said would fit on 10 gig, didn't it? Let's give it eight. It's a primary partition, you're allowed three, four primary partitions or three primary and one logical partition. The logical can then be divided in, I think, up to 16 partitions. Beginning of the space, um, that's the default, the XT4 journaling file system, that's okay. What it needs is a mount point, though you'll at least need to mount. Having second thoughts on that actually. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to start by creating a swap area. Now the swap area you'll find here. There it is. There's an argument over whether you need a swap area or not. I usually use one the same size as the memory I gave it, which was 3 gig. And then in the free space, I'm going to create a partition to hold Ubuntu. I'll give it 8 gig. And you need at least a root directory. Let it default to XT4. It's OK. Now, you can click Go now if you want to, but if you're likely to reinstall Ubuntu or install the next version of Ubuntu, which is more likely, a better idea is to create a home directory. So your mount point is home and that's where all your user files go. You give it a size depending on how many files you're going to put on there. So you might make it the whole disk. I'm not going to because I want to use this disk for something else later on. So I'm just going to give it 2 gig. There's my home partition. So the minimum you need is swap root. Uh, you can have a home partition if you want. You know what you're doing. You go to the free space. You can set up mount points for temp, which holds temporary files, for var, which holds uh, things like print files and log files for USR, which holds a lot of the software uh, for local software that you might install. Uh, but I'm not going to do that, but I never bother doing that. I cancel that and now I'm going to click install. I'm not going to let it run, I'm going to stop it because it will take a while, but I'll tell you how long it takes. So, what it says now is if you continue, the changes list below will be written to the table. Blah -de blah -de blah so it's going to write partition 1, partition 5 and partition 6 as swap and both of these will be formatted as ext4 so I'll lose any data that was there. 
Um, choose where you are. It's defaulted to London. But I mean, if you're in America, just click on the map. Sorry, it's Canada. <laughs> it's close. Uh, then most installations will ask you who you are and expect you to create your own user. Give your machine a name. This is a Sunny Vio. I usually log in as KDM. Um, you can give what you want. Normally when I'm just setting up silly things, I use KDM123 as a password. It's not going to check. Well, it says it's a fair password, but this is only testing within VirtualBox, so it doesn't matter. The real system, you give it a proper password. Now it's installing, so now I'm going to freeze it for a while. Right, I've just started it again. It's nearly finished. It's been running for 14 minutes. Right, and it's done. We need to restart in order to use the new installation. So we'll say restart now. It might ask us to take the USB stick out. It's probably a good idea. Some do and some don't. There we go. So, take out my USB stick, press enter. Take a little while to start. Right, I paused the video there. I don't know what happened there, but Ubuntu didn't start. So what I did was clicked at the top, powered it off, started again. But this time it's come up with the, the grub menu. So there's Ubuntu. There are the advanced options for Ubuntu as a memory test. So uh, it normally gives you a number of seconds to decide how long um, it's going to take to boot see that what we'll do we'll turn it off again and we'll start it again and you'll see what it comes up with the bottom there 29 seconds you can change that in the grub i'll be doing something on that uh, in an ad hoc video later i press return now it's booting ubuntu all these little messages about the mouse popping up. While well, it's doing that, if you want to make it full screen, you can do that uh, by pressing, by pressing. See, it says right control in the bottom corner here. Right control. Um, is a special key within VirtualBox. It's used to, if you can't move the mouse out, which sometimes you can't out the box like that, you can free the mouse with right control. Also, if I press right control and F, now it attempts to go full screen. It won't go full screen because we need to install something first before it does that. There's my user, my password. Take it back to where it was with Control and F. There's some configuration to VirtualBox that you need to do to take advantage of all that VirtualBox offers. Um, it offers a shared clipboard, which is disabled by default. You can make it bi-directional, which means you can copy things into the VM from the desktop and out of the VM. It also offers shared folders so you can map to a folder on the desktop. Um, I've never managed to get drag and drop to work. But to get those to work what you have to do first is go to devices and install the guest editions. Do that in a moment. Let's have a quick look at this. Connect to my online accounts. I don't think so. Live patch. Can 
Chronicle Live Patch. Da, 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 da. Um, next. Help improve Ubuntu. Next. Next. We're ready to go. Done. Hurrah. Oh, here we are. There are my files. This is no my issue. Like I said, I don't use Ubuntu. There are my files there. And if I want to open a terminal, right click perhaps. Yes, open terminal. There we go. There's a terminal. So nothing in nothing in my desktop. I don't like the way it does that. It should open in your home directory. Not on the desktop. Now, like I said, what you should do first is go to devices and install guest editions. Um, no, remind me later. So, install guest editions. What it does, it mounts a CD image on the desktop, hopefully. There we go. Um, and you can run it. <coughs> it runs with root permissions, so you'll need to supply your password. And if it works, it doesn't always work, but it should work. Uh, it means you'll be able to use shared folders and copy and paste. Uh, I'll be going into that in more detail. There we go. Um, in a later video, what I'm going to do in get the mouse out before I change screens, what I'm going to do later on, after I've shown you how to partition with Gparted, is I'm going to install and configure Mint. So I'll go into more on how VirtualBox works uh, on that post. Then I'm going to install Arch and then I'm going to dual boot Mint and Arch. Actually, I might triple boot Mint, Arch and Ubuntu. Just for fun. Um, turn to close the window and it's done. And then you can keep it as it is. If you save the machine state, click OK. If you want to find the files, well, remember you can right click there and create a shortcut on the desktop. I say remember because I showed you how to do this in the first section of the course. This course, in the introduction there, I showed you how to set up VirtualBox. But if you haven't seen that, that's how you can. Um, Save on the desktop. Other thing you might want to do is take a snapshot. You can do that here. So you could say after guest additions. And that's a point that you can get back to if something goes wrong. Right, that's the end of this um, video. Next time I'll be doing uh, how to partition using Gparted. And like I said, going on to install and configure Mint and Arch and Dual Boot. Um, if you haven't already, do have a look at the Linux command line for beginners. I've already posted the introduction. Soon I'll be posting accessing the system. And that's the end of this video, so bye for now.